RTTV is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Keep your private information private using a VPN. Uh, don't let hackers steal your financial details. Secure your data. Go to expressvpn.com slash RTTV to learn more. Thank you, ExpressVPN. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I'm Gus. I'm a Gavin. I'm Brian. Uh, oh, sorry, Blaine. I'm Blaine. <laughs> and I'm Gus. Blaine, he don't, was... don't, don't apologize, Brian. You get the order right. We go over oh! the order specifically before we start. And yes. it was Brian and then Blaine. You were right. Blaine was wrong. We were doing audio <laughs> check before the show. Blaine, Blaine asked Brian back. if he sounded okay, not realizing he, he, he wasn't talking to Brian. Blaine's just been on a roll. Sorry, I think everything's about me. You know how it goes. Holy I didn't realize Blaine would be having a bowel movement while I was trying to introduce myself. <laughs> I feel so freaking bad. freaking March again. It's March again. It is. Uh, b before we get into that, I do want to remind people <laughs> that uh, that uh, we're still uh, celebrating Black History Month, and uh, we've been raising money for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Austin Area Urban League. So organizations dedicated to fighting racial injustice. We upped our goal uh, with them to $15,000 for the Austin Area Urban League to support their campaign that's benefiting victims of the recent winter storms here in Austin. Uh, so there's more reasons now to join if you're able. You can donate at receipt.com slash donate. Or if you want, we've got some great merch. We've got a shirt, a hoodie, and a hat from the Black Excellence Collection. Uh, and all profits from the Sky's the Limit t-shirt, Black Excellence pullover hoodie, or Black Excellence snapback cap. I'll go to the Austin Urban League. I'm wearing the hoodie right now. It's awesome. Uh, go check it out. Donate if you can. Buy some merch if you can. Really appreciate it. Really go a long way. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to say that before we go any further. But you're right, Gavin. It's March. It's another March. Cycle. We're coming up on one year of at-home podcasts. March 23rd was our last uh, in-studio we'll podcast be last year. Back in by next March. <laughs> by oh, next God. March, sure. <laughs> so don't stop. Don't even guess because I remember everyone was like. December, or sorry, January 2021. January 2021. Like, everyone set this, like, fucking nonsensical date. I don't know where date. that came from, though, because I feel like the first thing we heard was the next 18 months are a wash. I feel like that was the very first thing said. Really? I didn't want to believe it. was taken it. Wait, seriously. The last time I saw you, Gavin, was after that March 23rd podcast last year. We were in the parking lot leaving stage five, and uh, I was like, kind of crazy. It's going to be a while, huh? In my head, I was like, we'll be back in July. <laughs> <laughs> It'll only be a couple of months. <laughs> it won't be that Everyone bad. thought a couple of months. And then, it, yeah, I was talking to the, a group this morning. We had a meeting for our social team and we were like reflecting back on March 13th is when our company went out and it was a Friday the 13th. It's like, I don't believe in any of the luck bullshit, but it is very <laughs> funny that it timed on a Friday the 13th it was the last time I saw my friends. Ugh. But, so, yeah. Depressing. Well, I think, I think it'll be some point this year. Maybe by, you, you want to make predictions? No. By September. I, I'm not predicting shit. I don't want to jinx the planet. It can happen. Who knows? I, I'm not but saying yeah, anything. You you have a good like track record with predictions, though, right? I feel like you have the best luck in, like... <laughs> I, I don't know. I would trust your, your prediction. <laughs> Next week! <laughs> oh, God, right. Oh, never mind. I'm just making it wrong. Yeah. But I, I, mean, I think we're, we're, we definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel, I feel like. Well, we have like. three vaccines, though. Right. So the that's Johnson good. Johnson one just came out. That's a one-shot vaccine. Right, but it's not as good. Like, <laughs> it's like the 65% still... one. And they're like, no, it's... don't compare. And that's like, no, yeah, I'm not going to compare, but I want one of the 95% ones. I don't <laughs> want this get, bullshit 65% one. Just stick yeah, them true. all in. It all true. adds up to at least 100%. I think that's how it works. I think that's true. I think in the end, even if the efficacy is lower in preventing the disease, the the end result is you won't get as sick. You don't have to go to the, if you do get it, you don't have to go to the hospital. There's not a threat that you're going to die. It's still going to protect you from that stuff, which is like the most important. Because then it's like then it's just like anything else. Then you just get sick. Then you're just the asshole who misses a week of work. We're not all stuck in our <laughs> in our houses, you know, <laughs> zooming in to do work for the next year. I remember just... talking to TPG when we were like first went home. We had a little meeting about some sponsored thing that obviously didn't happen because if because nothing happened <laughs> he was he was setting up all his stuff he's like yeah the next two weeks are gonna suck from here i was like two weeks it's gonna be so much longer than that <laughs> that is optimism two weeks was optimism yeah i've been I wanting to like rebook my flights to japan because we were supposed <laughs> to go so it's supposed to be march of last year and then we went under and then we're like all right we'll rebook surely we'll be out of this by march 2021 
March 2021 rolls around and they're like, no fucking Americans can come through here, which I mean, everybody's blocking their borders, so I get it. But it, the, the, the hope was that we would be over there in no fucking way. I'm hoping to uh, to visit uh, Nintendo Super Nintendo World in Japan at some point this year. That's my goal. I want the world to open Hell up enough yeah. to where I can go to a Super Nintendo theme park and like... 12 year old me will be so jealous i'm going <laughs> that's the one good thing about our flight getting delayed is that when we were going to go originally nintendo world would not have been open but now it will be so i don't know if, I don't know if we ever ever go I, I doubt america's gonna give me my money back american airlines why not just because it's been so long they just bitched and moaned the entire time that they're helping me helping me get my uh refund from the last one and I ultimately just got like a glorified gift card with fees taken out. Hmm. So not the best fees. Yeah. Ooh, everything has fees. Yeah. Have you guys been out in public and seen somebody like not wearing a mask and got like mad at him? Like I was at H E B and this dude, he was like older than me. He didn't have a mask and he was like in his fifties. And I, I wanted to say something to him, like, because I was so, like, I'm just, like, getting so mad at him. But he was, like, 6'5", six, 6'6". <laughs> six, six, and I was, like, I can't fight that guy if it yeah. comes down well, to also, it. Well, like, also, so his mouth is, is so much higher up. He's probably, uh, yes. he's probably fine. <laughs> he, but he's projecting, he's projecting all of the germs down. They come out from his mouth and down onto all of us. Right. Oh, right. He's, exactly. he's spreading They're everyone, but nothing's coming down up. on me. <laughs> Yeah, and an, and an employee asked him to put on his mask, and he had a little bandana, and he pulled it up a little bit, and then he goes, there, make you feel better. Yeah. Like he was there's, being there's, cool. There's no, there's no point in trying to confront people like that. Like, I'll passive-aggressively stare you. at them. Thank you for validating yeah. my cowardice. I'll, yeah. just, I'll, just like, <laughs> I'll just, like, glare at them until they make eye contact with me, then I'll look away real fast. Yes! <laughs> Yeah, that, that's about the extent of it. I was gonna say something to his wife, who he was with. Yeah, and he was coming, and of course she was right in front of me, and I was like stuck, like I couldn't get anywhere. It was the worst. I yeah. almost gave my mom a panic attack because uh, I did visit home during the holidays. You know, I was like being really safe. I, I haven't fucking gone anywhere, so I felt safe enough that I was able to go home and visit my par parents. Uh, and we were out in public picking up a meal <laughs> from this place called Scotty P's Hamburgers, and this couple went in. Uh, no masks and threw a fucking fit when the lady that was taking their order was like, Hey, I can't take your order unless you guys put on a mask. And they just started throwing a fit. And then I was just like, probably about 15 feet away. I was just insulting them. And I was like, what fucking idiots. And my mom was like, playing stop, stop, stop. And they were like looking over and I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, it was just, it was really uncomfortable for everybody, but like, they you're, suck. You're, you're coming in from out of town, causing problems for your mom. She has to live there. She's going to run into yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Fuck those people, though. Just, just, no. just do the thing. It's. I think that's it. You, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna continue wearing masks even after, <laughs> yeah. for like, for, for the conceivable future. I think like I'm fucked up. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have them with me. I already bought I mean, them. If, I need to get my money's worth out of them. Yep. We're <laughs> talking about people not doing it a year in. They're never gonna do it. They're, it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. They know. There's no way they, they don't know at this point. How was your, uh, how was your birthday, Gus? It was good. Um, I, uh, luckily, power and water was restored, which was my birthday wish this year. Thank you. you know, thankfully, <laughs> in the year 2021, uh, my birthday dream was to have electricity and water at my house. And it came true. I think it's really going to be my year. It's really coming. You're mad. Your, mad, your mad Max birthday wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and enough gasoline to get to the store. Yeah. What a, what a fucking nightmare. Yeah, it was OK. Uh. I was texting you. I was like, dude, we need to have a winter storm story extravaganza because we just I, we, we got fucked up. And I feel like I, I, was, I was talking to some guys I was playing some video games with and we were all just kind of like still shell shocked. And I know this sounds very dramatic from people in the north, but again, they, they have to understand Austin, Texas was not ready for this at all. And we're not used to these conditions. So, yeah, we got fucked up really bad. Uh, but for it to go dramatically from hell, it was like 30s in my house to a beautiful 80 degree day days later yeah and i was like outside walking i felt my like dog within 48 oh. hours it went from seven degrees to 80 degrees it was like, yeah yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Like, what happened <laughs> i felt like i was when losing I my out, fucking mind when i walked out yesterday the front of my house had two inches of ice everywhere on it and now it's just all gone yeah it was weird to go from having no power huddling by the fire <laughs> 
to uh, kind of want to put on the AC, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> With I, over the span I, of like three days. I, at, at one point, I had gotten so desperate for food because it had gone on for so long that there's a convenience store not too far from where I live. So I was like, I can walk there. So like I walked there to look for food. And the only food I could find were canned vegetables. I was like, all right, this is fine. You know, worst comes to worst, I can I can eat these canned vegetables. So I bought them <laughs> and uh, took them home. And then as I got them home, I was taking them out of my grocery bag and I looked at them. And the best buy date on both of them was tw in 2016. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, you know those cans have been sitting there for at least eight years then. Because they, they, they already what? probably had years. The date is probably years after they're canned. And at this point... Five years so in the long. past, it was a convenience store. Who goes and buys French cut green beans at the fucking corner <laughs> store? You know. Oh it's my like, god! You think so? You could have put anything there on that can, and it would have sat there for eight years untouched. That's insane. Yep. It, it had a lot of dust on it, which is why I looked. Like I got it home, I was like, "Oh, I need to wipe this can down. It's really dusty." <laughs> I was like, "2016? What? That was probably on the shelf the year I moved to to America." <laughs> <laughs> That can's more of an Austinite than Gavin is. <laughs> <laughs> the can's already complaining about Liberty Lunch getting torn down <laughs> and like how much better there. Austin used to be. I yeah. tell you what though, I bet you could have eaten it and it would have been fine. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a real oh, thing. Oh, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> Look, it crashed. I just thought that was a school Six, home, three, screen. School home screen. <laughs> Jesus. No, I, wow. fuck, I fucked up all my focus. All right, there we go. I gotta fucking fix all this. It's a it nightmare. Like, you gotta see me. Okay. Is that go. like your one for one Focus mode? Assist. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like when it zoomed out, it looked like you were just in an empty room on a set. Like you were yeah, now you see into that one role. Yeah, <laughs> one you see that the only effort in this room is what you can see in the frame. Like you zoom out, it's like this bear everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a set, yeah. Dude, I, I was really should... fortunate. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I was very fortunate because my neighbor uh, I like hanging out with these guys all the all the time. Like we'll hang out from like across the alley, talking at each other. I'll be working out. He'll be building shit. And uh, <laughs> he's from Flint, Michigan, so he knows how this shit goes. And he was just like feeding me all of these winter weather tips. And uh, I like survived because of that guy. But uh, he he was saying that like windows let out a lot of uh, heat. So he's like, you got to insulate your windows. So cover them up with every, whatever you got. You know, like blankets, cardboard, whatever. And uh, I. Basically boarded up all of my windows, and my house looked like it was in the middle of a fucking zombie apocalypse. <laughs> so not only was it cold, but every, there was no light. And it was just really sad and depressing. Yeah, I, uh, I I closed like every door to all the rooms that I would I didn't want to be in. Like I wanted to keep the heat from mm. the fire in the room I was in. But if I had to get something from one of those rooms after like three days below freezing without power, you go into those rooms, it would actually be like walking outside. It would be like yeah. going yeah. into the yeah. winter. Crazy. Uh, um, I, I I feel like I, I owe a special debt of gratitude to uh, Alan Abdeen. Uh, my in-laws were uh, were stuck in another part of town, and uh, I needed help getting them over to my place. And uh, he he's the only person I know who had a vehicle with uh, chain tire chains and a four-wheel drive vehicle. And oh, wow. he was able he was able to go pick them up and bring them over to my place on one of the days when it was like super icy and impossible to drive anywhere. Uh, so a big, big thank you to Alan. Really, really helped me out. Uh, while you I was saved going my on. pipes. I was, uh, I needed to get a water key, but there's no fucking way I could get one. Cause my, my thing was gonna, was, had a lock on it. And, uh, fortunately Gus had one. So I drove out and he left it on his porch and I was able to pick it up. Mm -hmm. So you saved my pipes. Is that yeah, the big tea, tea thing? No, this yeah, is the one, like... this, this is the smaller one, not the big one. Wow. Yeah. Like Gavin's talking about the one that to like turn the, the water off. Blaine's talking about the one to open the case. Yeah, no, Ooh. I just like got a crescent wrench and put a screwdriver through it and made my own little tea thing. Oh, that but, I saw uh, that YouTube video where the guy shows you how to do it. Yeah, like yeah. here's how you shut it off at the street. Yeah, it's awesome. What one it of my neighbors? Too. One of my neighbors had their pipes burst, and uh, he told me that the plumber told him he would come out at the end of March. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> like it's so, it's so, so crazy. Got, they have to have their water off at the street then this whole time. Yeah, they, they have it oh, off. Oh man. Dude. I told mine did I told, too. I, mine did I told too. You mine can use came... my hose outside anytime he wants. <laughs> mine came and knocked on my door and said, uh, "Yeah, my uh, our pipes busted in the garage. Do you know how to turn it off?" 
And I was like, no, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, like, I have no I, idea. If, if there's a video game about turning off pipes, I could do that. But I don't, like, have any world, real world skills on how to do this. <laughs> it's like, I felt like so bad. <laughs> Where you just have to rotate yeah. the pipes in the water? Yes. Like, yeah, the hacking like game. pipe dream? Yeah. Yeah, um, I can uh, Google the city uh, number to shut off your water, and they won't be out again until, like, April. Yeah. <laughs> They uh, so there was like ice and snow all over my yard and I went out there to go like turn off my thing because I got the key and stuff like that. So I was like looking for it. Ah, I found it. Okay, here we go. Lift it off, turn it off, go back to my house and the pipes are st- like the faucets are still dripping. I was like, ah, shit. And I was like going in there, messing with it, going back and forth, going back and forth. And I was like looking at the map of my property and I was like, ah, that's that's the place. That's the place. And I was like walking around and I went out there and I went like two feet to the left of that, stomped on it. And I was like, Oh, that's mine. I just turned off my neighbors. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's surprising so I, how easy it is to do that, right? Like you could just cut yep. off some, yeah. someone's water. You oh, could man. hold them for ransom. Yeah. You have the key. They don't know how to turn it back on. If they're anything like me, they would be up shit creek. Just like well, pretend the, you, you'd look like an I'm adult. Out of water you don't have the skills. Yeah. It's, exactly. In the, in the middle of all that, I heard my, I had some water in my kitchen sink because I was doing some dishes. The, uh, the old way with a sink mm. and stuff and i just heard my sink go like and, and i was like what the hell was that and water was just pissing out into the cabinet underneath all of a sudden i was like what on earth like so this is like an internal pipe <laughs> and i just got like a little wrench i just quickly grabbed one and i tightened the thing and it stopped and i was like Ooh. i think Damn. that was a leak completely coincidentally that just started with there's <laughs> nothing to do with the weather it just the underneath my kitchen sink just started leaking and there was no ice or anything. I think it was a sheer Weird. coincidence. Maybe because it was, a... maybe because it was colder, like the pipes sh- like expanded or contracted a bit and it caused yeah, it to maybe, come loose. Maybe they got a little bit smaller and had yeah. a little gap. It, it was, was a total, just like a crash course in home ownership. I'm sure you guys went through it yes. too. Yeah. Yes. I, I, was free, I was freaking out. I was getting ready to like turn off all the water to the house and I just, I literally turned a little bolt, like a quarter of a turn around and it stopped. I was like, all right, <laughs> crisis averted. <laughs> I was freaking out. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Honey. Uh, these days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping we really do. And we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for the best promo codes and applies them directly to your cart. And it works with over 30,000 online stores, ranging from gaming to tech to popular fashion brands, even food delivery Uh, You name it, it probably supports Honey, or Honey supports it. Uh, Here's how it works. Uh, You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its over 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up. All you have to do is click apply coupons. If Honey finds working codes, it'll apply the best one to your cart, and then watch the price magically drop. It's that simple. I can't explain, I can't overemphasize how easy it is. It just sits there, and then when you need it, it pops up. You don't have to do anything. I know in the past I've had to go through and look for coupon codes that work somewhere, and it takes a long time. Sometimes it doesn't work, or usually it doesn't work, but with Honey, it's super simple. It just takes a second for it to do it. I can't believe how quick and easy it is. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. That's billion with a B. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash rooster. That's joinhoney.com slash rooster. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was, uh, I, I, I'm getting, I'm getting sick of living in unprecedented times. I'm done with it. I've, I've had enough, yes. uh, I've yeah. had enough for a while. Let's, uh, let's just all You want your presidented times back? Yeah, presidented let's have our, <laughs> let's go back to regular precedented time, PT. That's in March, right? The clock switches. We go from uh, unprecedented time to <laughs> precedented time. <laughs> Damn farmers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, what was that? Man. What was that, uh, clock? Like the the one that was like X minutes to midnight. Wait, the, the doomsday like, clock. The doomsday yeah. clock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where would we be on that? I mean, that's, that's a real thing. That's for like nuclear war, though, right? Yeah. Or the end of the world in any way. Nuclear war, I think. Yeah. Actually, are you googling it, Gus? I'm looking it up. Yeah. Doomsday I'm, assume, clock. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bet and say it's thirteen to midnight. Wow. I was gonna say like four or something. I feel like we hit it last week or like two weeks ago. Like we hit here in Austin, at least like there, were, I don't know how y'all felt, but there were a couple of days where I felt like, 
oh, this maybe just things aren't going to get better now. Like, it's just broken. The city, like, nobody's coming for us. Because if you're in Texas, it's like, well, the government's not really there to help you out. It's just yeah. there to wear cowboy hats and press conferences, basically. And, and <laughs> say fuck you to the federal government. Yeah, uh, right. Go to the CPAC last time... and make jokes about San, uh, fucking Cancun. Or Sorry, like, what do you say? The last time the doomsday clock was moved was in 2020. It is currently 100 seconds to midnight. Oh, oh God. Oh, it's done in seconds? <laughs> it used to be minutes. It's, it's gotten so close now. <laughs> it's, that they've to seconds. it's less than We're two minutes away. We're always a couple of minutes. Let's put it down yeah. to seconds. We're going to yeah, be a milliseconds it, in a year. <laughs> it, it, every other previous iteration of it was in minutes. And it's now, Jeez. as of 2020, at 100 seconds. Very cool. They got to adjust uh... this clock. It's obviously way off. It's been at 100 seconds for a year. But is it still like a physic, like a whole clock? Like, why not just have a sliver of the clock at this point, like a pie? Like, if we're if down watch, to the that's that's really pessimistic. You want to be able to think that you could really put it far back. <laughs> you want like half an hour to midnight. <laughs> yeah. In Watchmen, they had like the full clock, but it was only the last quarter that was actually like had minute numbers and ticks on it. Yeah. So I'm basically also who's Watchmen, who's like in charge now. of this clock. Like, is this the same person who emails me about my Google ad results that they're not looking great? Like, it, I, I need to know the backer behind this. It, it's like, uh, like vague scientists, just vaguely. Yeah, just yeah, but who? Like, yeah, exactly. I think it's <laughs> a cool scientists. visualization, though. It's, it sounds less boring than like, I mean, what? How else would you scale it? Uh, oh, it's a, just, just to clarify, it's a general doomsday clock is what I'm reading here. Okay, so not just nuclear war. I think initially it started because of that, but now it's more widespread. So we're talking a lot more climate change happening. and shit. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Very they, neat. It's, it's, it's like, it, I'm reading their most recent press release, which came out in January, and it sounds like something the villain releases in a superhero movie. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to read the, the very beginning part of this to you. To leaders and citizens of the world, this is your COVID wake-up call. It is one Free the rest of the Sinister Six. Humanity <laughs> continues to suffer as the COVID-19 pandemic spreads around the world. <laughs> Real I'm not gonna, stuff, you know? <laughs> that's fucking horrifying. Yeah, but okay, so I can assume that it is scientists and not poets then. <laughs> Writers. Uh, if I'm not you do say... not deliver the Batman <laughs> to me in 30 hours, in 100 seconds, I will advance the doomsday clock five seconds. Is it like a manually adjusted? Is it just some guy who walks up to it every so often and just changes the hand? Or is it, is it typed <laughs> in with a computer? Again, going, to watch, going back to Watchmen, it's a bunch of dudes in lab coats. They go up, they take the, the minute hand. And then they slowly move it, and then they all turn to post. Yeah, they turn the to the camera. <laughs> I like that. Oh, so man. it used to be one person who maintained the clock. Apparently, he died. <laughs> yeah. Then he died. Then when he died in 1973, oh. uh, the Bulletin Science Security Board took over responsibility, and has since met Science. twice a year to discuss world events and reset the clock as necessary. I just love the idea of that being the last thing that happens on Earth. Like, there's this shit falling from the sky, like, all the tectonic plates are, like, tipping upside down, and some guy just ticks it to midnight and calls it a day, and then it just falls through the ground. Just do, do you remember, we, we talked about this in the podcast a few years ago, but um, there was that CNN video that leaked, where it's like, they had that video in their uh, video archive system that was like, play this in the event of nuclear war. Oh! <gasps> Are you uh, kidding me? Please no, send me you this. Can, you can find it on YouTube. It's like, oh it's my awesome. god, that's yeah. fucking great. It's like you what know they called? prep. Uh, I don't look up like CNN nuclear war video. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, but you know, they, it's just like the thing where they pre-write obituaries and just fill in the details when someone passes. It's like they figured it was an inevitability. They had to be ready to cover it, so they had a video ready in the in the event of a nuclear war. That's Maybe like, it's like the old school, like when the TV stations used to go off the air yeah. and they would play the national it, anthem that, that's and an what it eagle was. soaring, <laughs> and then it would go to a test pattern, just but for the world. Yeah. yeah. Horrifying. I won't say how much I spent, but I spent a pretty penny on survival equipment once all this shit was done. The I remember sitting time? on my couch. Yep. Because there will be a next time. Oh, fuck yeah. You're smart. Yeah, that will. Yeah. That, that, was, a, that you... was a little preview. I've got an Amazon wish list, Brian, and I can send it to you. I, I was talking to like, I think I was talking to Gus and Becca Frazier, played sister on RVB. 
uh there's some stuff from bernie on there i was just like taken up like solar power let's get away from gas need some water storage right maybe a generator or something like that mm-hmm. yeah. i'm still pricing out generators right now yeah nice hell yeah i, sent, I mean I'm not, I'm not fucking around dude. yeah i that, sent that blaine sucked. a link i even before this i had been thinking about buying a generator for my house uh that sits in line with your power system and it feeds into your natural gas hookup so if electricity goes out it just automatically kicks in and continues powering uh like a house your home yes. Right. Oh, speaking of which, Tesla that reminds one. me, uh, that story, I, I sent Gavin a story yesterday that I read in The Statesman, that apparently the water treatment plant in Austin had a backup generator, uh, but it lost power because no one at the plant knew how to turn the generator on. Yes! Yes! And that's, <laughs> that's why we had a boil water notice, is because the main water plant went offline uh, for three hours because no one knew how to turn the generator on. It's uh, fucking idiocracy. It's idiocracy, <laughs> dude. Like Appar- that what? movie becomes more and more relevant every year. Apparently, they had they had just appropriated funds to update the generator backup system this past gen- like last month in January. They had appropriated funds to make it so that it would become automatic and it would turn on on its own. Uh, but they just haven't installed the new equipment yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I want a backup generator so, like, right at the end, like, right as the world is coming to an end, I can be the last streamer. Just gaming <laughs> to whoever, to the Battle aliens. Toads. I can just game all the way, all the way to the end. They're like, man, mm-hmm. all the Fortnite servers are down. Who just sat in the lobby, just streaming yeah. till the end. Like, the piano. I see, <laughs> yeah, I see the asteroid approaching from my window. <laughs> yeah, as I'm just waiting for a match. It's That's terrifying awesome. how close the whole of texas came to just a complete bollocking meltdown they they said it was like we we're like a few minutes away from losing the whole grid or something oh yeah. my god yeah and that would have uh, like i was trying to read about it I, I didn't really understand why it would take so long to take the power on but they were saying it would probably take months well, to turn everything back on i think the gist of it was that um <laughs> equipment would break would become overloaded and break and it's not like they can just go down to the local hardware store and buy replacement parts to fix it. It's like, it's like then, specific things. Right, like whole yeah. pieces of infrastructure need to be remanufactured. So it's like you have to contact the plant to make new pieces of hardware and equipment and then get that sent out and installed, which would like oh, just, take months it would be to get over. it all done. It would be, everyone would die. But, not yeah, me, it would have been a, done. It would have been a catastrophe. <laughs> like yeah. everyone would have just gone total survival mode uh, well, I, they, well, you, no one would be able to even communicate with anyone if all the the cell towers are off. It my, would have been freaking awful, and we were like minutes away. My favorite part of the whole thing was that I was like freezing my ass off, like holding on to my dog in our closet because that's where we were sleeping because it's the central most <laughs> uh, room in, in the house. It's actually pretty fucking cozy. I'm probably gonna make that into like a gaming space. But anyways, <laughs> I was like texting my. <laughs> mom and dad with what little battery i had and they were telling me it's because of the fucking uh, the uh windmills, windmills. Like. they're like they're like firing <laughs> me on it and they had power the whole time <laughs> they, no, their life changed it not at all and i'm fucking freezing i could just uh, imagine it from the perspective of like my family in england just see on the news that texas went off like even from space like it's just dark and then <laughs> just never hearing from me again that that's that could have been it, it, it would be like possibility looking at the satellite views of north korea versus south korea where yeah, south korea yeah. all the lights and north korea is just dark i would is assume it? it like confirmed their worst fears about you living in texas too because it's so stereotypically texas like we don't we're not a part of the rest of the grid we have our own grid and we completely fucked it up yeah. like it's so texas oh, how did he die oh just from other people's greed and stubbornness oh, yeah because yeah. <laughs> people didn't want to pay their property taxes is that's oh. why he died oh. i saw an article speaking of north korea where there were russian diplomats who had to use a hand trolley like cart on the railways to leave the country because their country is so stricken by covid that they couldn't even get an operating train to leave so they're like literally pushing their luggage on a on a like an old-fashioned minor cart where you have to like do the Uh, hand crank it also really put into perspective to me i'm not sure like what the situation became in flint michigan it is that still going the water thing or did they 
eventually were they able to fix the water? I want to say it's I, still going. I feel like I feel like I just it's stopped going. hearing about it. But it really puts it into perspective of uh, surely everyone would just have to leave. It's insanity. But I'm not like sure you would just have any... to flee for a better state. Yeah. yeah. Or a better like city. Like this state, yeah. like it, it almost was to the point where it was like, oh, Texas didn't work. It failed. Everyone has to leave. <laughs> Maybe come back another time. <laughs> so it, lo it looks like the Flint situation may finally be getting resolved right about now. <laughs> After, oh, no. God, 10 like, years? Yeah, it took him a decade. Cool. Almost, almost a decade? Almost USA number years. one, baby. According to yeah. Wikipedia, it says that it ended in February of 2019. But if you read this article, they're still doing work on it, which makes me think it's still not done. Hell they're yeah. close. My mom was texting me from Mississippi asking if I was okay. <laughs> and just that, like, if we're not doing better than Mississippi, like, no offense, but, like, we haven't done well as a state. Like, we're a lot richer than Mississippi. We should be able to afford power. But, yeah, she was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I felt bad because a lot of my friends from L.A. and just, like, all over the country were texting. They're like, oh, how are you holding up? Can I do anything for you? It's like, there's literally nothing you can do. Yeah. There's like they're like, can I Uber Eats you some food? And I was like, there is no Uber Eats. Like it's like yeah, not a no. thing right now. <laughs> Uber Eats is dead. I, I remember. <laughs> I wanted to see, so I launched it just for just to see if there was anything out there. And like you would launch Uber Eats, and you'd be like, Uber Eats is currently offline in your area due to inclement weather. Check back later. I was like, yeah, sure, thanks. <laughs> but, I mean, we you wouldn't want same... those people driving in that condition anyway. Right. Oh God, no, no, I'd nah. feel shit. There was a guy. The same <laughs> there was Sorry. there was a guy who was live streaming himself. I don't know if you guys saw it. There's like a delivery driver in Austin, uh, who like set up a webcam, or maybe it's his phone in his car, and he just live streams himself making deliveries all around town. And one of those nights, I think like Monday night, like after the snowstorm hit, he was still out making deliveries. And wow. uh, at one point, maybe around eleven or twelve at night, he was driving over by where was he? he was over like by Pleasant Valley and Riverside. Uh, Montopolis in that area somewhere and yeah. uh, he was pulling into a gas station and he like hit a little bit of ice and then his car slid and uh, hit the curb and he popped one of his tires and then he was like oh, oh guess I'm just going to sleep in my car right here now anyway end in the stream bye <laughs> <laughs> Jesus I still live over there I would not want to fucking sleep in my car in that. I did that I live there too yeah I remember God. that area very well we, we did the same thing you did, though, Gus. We, like, trekked to the convenience store. Yeah. Like, my daughter and I, that, that Monday when the snow was all on the ground and we walked, like, in the middle of the road because there was no tire or no cars. So we just walked to a convenience store and it was open and everyone was just buying beer. Just <laughs> beer and this one couple just had a stack as high as they were of frozen pizzas. Like as many, and I, I just thought like y'all are gonna get so fucking sick of those. Yeah. It, 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 that's too much. Also, how are you gonna cook? Like, I hope you have a gas oven and not an electrical. True. One. Yeah. Yeah, they were clearly like my. Yeah, yeah. I oh. lucked out because I'm so shit at cooking that I have nothing but canned foods. So like, <laughs> I was pretty good. I mean, as long as gas stuck stuck around, gas did stick around. I made macaroni and cheese probably like two or three times. Uh, my favorite though was I was making cider. I would just like heat up some some apple juice, and then I'd pour some Fireball whiskey in there. Just sip around, sip it on my cup. It's good. <laughs> get all cozy. So what, yeah, what did you drunk. do for entertainment? Well, I didn't masturbate because it was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honest, <laughs> honestly, like when it was cool. There's a a, a coworker of ours that lives nearby. So I was able to run over there and drop off like charge battery chargers and drop them off at their doorstep and they were able to charge for me. I thought you were gonna say you went over there and masturbated. Yeah. It was too cold. <laughs> Blink, no. Blink comes over five times a day to use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And it takes a long time. Uh honestly, it was just like going around my house, like at one point I thought I was legitimately going insane because here I was like trying <laughs> trying to find the perfect drip. Just like the like the perfect like <laughs> yes, stream of water. Yep. yep and yep. it was like I could hear it throughout my house, just dripping water, dripping water. So honestly, <laughs> like most of my day was spent insulating and checking on my pipes <laughs> and running around and just making sure conducting drips. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got, fucking symphony. I got into the habit of 
washing my hands in like a different bathroom than the one I peed in because in that bathroom I had the perfect drip and it takes a long time oh, to get the perfect yeah. drip, so I would just walk to another one. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I shoveled snow. Uh, Whoa! And it sucks. And on like the last day before everything defrosted, I what was the last? The last day when everything was frozen, what was that like? Thursday, Thursday Friday? Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I knew everything was going to defrost the next day. So like just just as a cathartic practice, I went out and I broke all the ice and shoveled it out of my driveway. Like I would just like shatter it and then like lift it up like with the with the shovel, just like break it. And then like I just made a huge pile of ice, just like cathartic, like fuck you. I know you're going to melt, but I'm going to destroy you at, by my own hand. I will destroy right. this ice. and right. make You're going to go pile. out on my terms, right. not yeah. nature's <laughs> terms. Exactly. Yeah. It was like Friday, I think, when it was like all kind of dripping and or you know drying up and stuff like that because the sun was out, like intense sun. Uh, so Dutch and I went. And there's like a park nearby my place and it has a pond, and we went and it was like it was like the best of both worlds because it sounded like it was raining because ice was melting from the ceilings and the trees, so you got that nice like ambient noise. But it was just like a beautiful fucking day. Uh, the pond still had like a thick ass layer of ice. And it was like covering almost the entire pond. And I was like seconds away from just walking on it. But I was like, this is, I don't want to go out like this. Like, I made it this far. I don't want to go out like this. <laughs> Jeez. So I just started throwing rocks. Start throwing rocks. Oh, oh, yeah. We made it. We made it. Sure we did. did it. We all deserve a, I, a prize. I just, it's so annoying that it's, it's not going to be the wake up call that it needs to be in terms of yeah. getting on renewable energy permanently, 100%. Because people are still just gonna block it. Yeah, it's very God, sad. I, it's. Very I wish it was. I wish it was a re-election year for Texas senators. Because yeah, well, there's a conspiracy on like the QAnon uh, uh, subreddits and the community that that the snow is fake here. I that saw it wasn't that. Real, that it never really happened. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to punch someone in the face. Like if if I could like just meet whoever. Uh, but yeah, no, that it just didn't happen. It cool. So like it my did. family members weren't like yeah without power. Fuck you. It was weird the way that it affected the trees and stuff because like it, it snowed on everything and that sort of sagged everything a little bit. And then there was like some thawing and then it froze again. But it meant that just like every twig was completely encased in ice yeah. on every tree, which I guess added like 10 times the weight to everything. So everything just like collapsed. It wasn't like any trees were blown down, but everything just fell down from the weight. Like all the palm trees look like they've been turned inside out and all the cactuses have <laughs> looked like the elephant sat on them. It's bizarre. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to cut down one of my trees with an axe because I don't have any serious tool. I just I'm just using Holy like shit. Of guys props on there. Like honestly, like you <laughs> I've used an axe so much in video games, effortlessly. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched other people use axes, they seem to be fine. After like six or seven swings with the axe, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, God. I was like sweating and my hands hurt. I was like, this sucks. How do I need to oh. I need to get fit so I can cut down my own trees. Awful. I, I feel gonna... that way in Stardew Valley. Like I'll work myself <laughs> to exhaustion and, and and just collapse in my farm at 3 p.m. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I would be laid up for a week if I worked like this. Yeah. You just face if down asleep at three in yeah. the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone has to drag me into my bed. Yeah. This episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by HBO Max. Uh, let's be honest, the past year has been kind of boring. We've all had the drama of Game of Thrones, but none of the dragons, magic, sword fights. The closest I get to the Fast and the Furious is when I'm driving slightly faster than I normally would on an empty road that would be packed with traffic if lots of people weren't, you know, staying home. Uh, so when HBO Max swooped in to save the day, HBO Max where HBO meets so, so much more with over 10,000 hours of new hits, classic favorites, and exclusive Max originals plus new movies every week, you can kiss boredom goodbye. HBO Max is the perfect place to fuel your fandom with character hubs devoted to your favorites, like the DC movies you've been meaning to binge. Uh, lately, uh, I've been watching The Sopranos for, God, I don't know, the fourth or fifth time. Uh, it's just because I love The Sopranos so much. Uh, also, also, you can check out Fury Road on there if you haven't seen it in a while. Amazing film. You should absolutely watch it. Uh, with HBO Max, you get original, groundbreaking, award-winning entertainment, which is yours all in one place, anytime, anywhere. New HBO Max viewers get seven days free, then pay $14.99 a month. Sign up now with a link in the description to get in on the action. I sent, you some, I sent you some screenshots of, of uh, Stardew Valley last night, Gus. 
Oh yeah, Gavin, <laughs> dude, those screenshots were insane. You had, oh, you tell them what you did. Yeah, so because I have an I have an 8K TV, which was kindly <clears throat> provided by LG a couple of years ago for a video, nice. and I thought you can't really play anything in 8K game wise unless you have a 30, 90, or whatever, which I don't. I I mean, I, I, I think they're still very difficult to get hold of. I just, I got last gen stuff. But it can run games that clearly aren't very taxing, but also aren't designed at all to run in 8K. So I just loaded up Stardew Valley and I like zoomed out as far as possible. And I guess the map is like 8,000 pixels wide and then it lets you zoom out a little bit. So you could fit the entire width of the map on the screen. Uh, and it, you don't have to pan around, and it's bizarre. There's like you can even see parts of the map that you can't usually see, and it so. looks photorealistic. On <laughs> it absolutely did not. So, like, were you? Did you play at all? Like, how long did you play for? Uh, I didn't really play much because my main game save is on the Switch. Okay. Um, and you can't really tr easily transfer from PC to Switch. So I was I curious, just, like, just, how would you play that? Would you just walk up to the screen was, and just like follow your guy? It around? was hard to see Gavin in the screenshots that he sent me. I was like, where is he on this? Like, you're looking at the whole map trying to find yeah. one person. So I, I can show this screenshot. I was, uh, if you walk below your farm, you get uh, like Marnie's animal farm and all that stuff. And there's also the lake and all that and the, the castle. That's like the entire, I don't know if you could see me. I'm like there. <laughs> I'm like right there, like a little ant. And uh, the yeah. HUD like shifts to the like it has to pillar box it because there's no pixels beyond that. <laughs> it's crazy. It looks like it's like uh, Pokemon or something. I might make a video about it because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I I love Stardew. I've never I've never seen it that way. I started doing Valheim, and it was like the first like I guess Among Us and Phasmophobia were like trends that I like got into, but this was one of them that I wasn't really understanding. And uh, I got onto it the other day and like, I, I fucking get it. Like me, Joel and James uh, spent like four hours building our, a beach house. <laughs> and, like we were like going about and I was, I was the roofer. And then like James was constructing the fireplace and stuff like that. Like that game fucking rules, man. Oh, really? I have no idea what that it? game was. I, 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 I've seen people talking about that game. I've not looked at a single screenshot or anything until right now. I had no idea what that game was about until he started describing it. I just knew people it's, were playing it. It's Viking uh, Minecraft with maybe Stardew. I don't fucking know. Is I don't that play one those of the games. places you can go in God of War? Is that one of the realms? I mean, it's, it all <laughs> takes place under the tree, like that big, big ass tree. So I'm assuming Yggdrasil so. or whatever. Yeah. 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 There's like, yeah, it's, all the Nordic stuff is, yeah, there, but it's it's fun. The, the soundtrack's a fucking bummer, though. Like, you listen to Minecraft, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm relaxed. And then, like, you you listen, you listen, play that, and it's like, oh, man, all my family's going to die someday. Is like, it, uh, like, Norwegian death metal or something, <laughs> that shit that they play? Christopher Lee or whatever? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, it's just, like, it's just a bummer. It's just, it's like, uh, like, peasants. Like, you're just, like, roughing it. Like, you're going to die. You're on the verge of death. And it's like, no, we're, just, we're having a good time. We're building, a, we're building our beach house, man. <laughs> Good game. Great game. I'll give it a go. Maybe at some point. Um, I, <clears throat> I, so, you know, everything like we we're talking about froze over. Even, I think Austin's still kind of recovering. Like, some people still don't have water and some places are fucked up. Uh, I, I, I under, I had the dumbest thing I did the other day that I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, I, what was it? It was like on Friday or Saturday. I decided, my wife and I decided we wanted to get a frozen Coke from McDonald's. You know, McDonald's making these frozen Cokes. Mm. Really good. Not something we, we get very often. It's like, let's go to McDonald's. Let's, let's buy this frozen Coke. So we drive to the McDonald's. It's closest to us. I pull up to the drive-thru and they've got like a handwritten sign on the drive-thru that says, no credit cards, only cash. Uh, we have a limited menu. And I was like, that's strange. So I get to the drive-thru and they're like, uh, and the first thing they say before they even say, like, welcome to McDonald's or may I take your order? They're like, we don't have sodas. We don't have <laughs> everything's still broken. And I was like, so no frozen Cokes? And they were like, we don't have soda. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so I, I took off and I left. I was like, I'm going to go try a different McDonald's. So I went to another McDonald's, like the next one closest to my house. 
And I pull up, and it's got a really long line. I'm like, all right, fuck, I'm already here. Might as well try it. Get right. in the long line, get up to the speaker, and uh, they don't have any signs. Wait, no, did they? I don't remember. I don't think they had. They didn't have any signs on their thing. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get it here. So the guy comes on to take my order. I'm like, I want a frozen Coke. He's like, oh, we don't have frozen Coke. I was like, fuck. Okay, fine. That's fine. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to a different McDonald's. I, I, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to another McDonald's. Like, I'm already on the road. I'm going to find this fucking frozen Coke. I go to another McDonald's. And uh, like when you pull up, sir, McDonald's, the other big... two McDonald's <laughs> called us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've got the big golden arches, and like under the golden arches, they've got that white sign where they can put up the letters and like mm. advertise whatever they want. And I pull up to this third McDonald's, and on that sign under the golden arches, it says, Try a frozen Coke. I'm like, Oh, great. They're going to have my frozen Coke here. <laughs> there you pull go. Up to the drive through, <laughs> and they've got that sign that says, We're not taking credit cards, cash only. I was like, All right, I've got cash. I can do this. Yeah. I, I pull up, and I'm like, they're like, welcome to McDonald's, how can I help you? They're like, I want a frozen Coke. They're like, oh, no, we don't have any drinks. <laughs> they're like, motherfucker. They're like, all right, all right, all right. So at this point, I'm like, I'm going to get my fucking frozen Coke. <laughs> so I was like, I remember what? earlier in the day, I had seen the a news story. story continues. That, yeah, it's still going. Trust me, it's not over. Why I, earlier in the day, Coke I seen a story freeze it? that uh, <laughs> the water plant in Austin went down, but the water plant in Round Rock never went down. So I was like, this might be related to the water issue. <laughs> oh, I'm going to drive to Round Rock <laughs> to see if I can buy a frozen Coke. No. And Round Rock's like a suburb north of Austin. So I go 35 and I drive up to uh, to Round Rock, the, <laughs> the closest McDonald's to, uh, to Austin and Round Rock. Pull in and they've got the fucking sign. It's like, what is the sign? The sign says something like, we only have canned drinks and we're not taking cash. Or we're not taking credit cards, we're only taking cash. So wait to the line, get up to the drive through window. I'm like, do you have frozen Coke? And the guy's like, yeah, you want one? I was like, yes, I want a frozen Coke. He's like, <laughs> he's like, all right, but we're not taking credit cards. You have to pay with cash. I was like, that's fine. That's fine. And I forget what the total was, like 228 or something like that. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, I had to pay with cash. I had cash. In my, I haven't used cash in a year, right? Because I've only been doing credit cards because of the whole COVID thing. I don't want to give them money and then like them give me back dirty money. So I'm like, frantically looking through my car trying to find 28 cents like so that <laughs> i don't have to get any money back from this guy and i'm like going through the center console and everything like like trying to find pennies and like i found 28 cents and i was like here you, here you go like don't don't touch me don't give me anything just give me my phone threw it at him because you don't want to touch him <laughs> right but i had to go to four mcdonald's and ended up driving to round rock to get a fucking frozen coke <laughs> Gus, was it worth it yes it tasted that much sweeter it it took it took i think over an hour to find it because i had to go we had to go to all those different mcdonald's what did you do in the pandemic granddad well one day i <laughs> drove around all day trying to find frozen coke <laughs> Uh, we will rebuild. We will survive. Uh, I did. I did like a, a couple, like a day or two after the big snow. I went to Waterburger, like near the house, and I shouldn't have gone because, like, they clearly didn't want to be open. But there was a line of us who wanted fucking Waterburger, <laughs> and like the lady was so mad when when she got like I've never had money snatched out of my hand by uh, a, a, an employee, but she just like snatched my credit card and was like so mad. And I, but I couldn't falter at all. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't want to fucking be working here either. And then she like <laughs> almost threw my order at me. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, thank you. No, I, I, hope stay, this. <laughs> I told her stay warm, oh, God. Like, but I like, I'm the reason you're here. Like it's my fault. I felt like after everything defrosted, every Whataburger in town had a line that went out into the street. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't get it. It's not that good. I feel like you everyone... shut your damn mouth, yeah, Gavin. It's fine. It's fine. I f <laughs> give it a few days. <laughs> it's okay. It's Whataburger. I own a. I own a Whataburger mask. They have a sick. This isn't sponsored. They own a. They have a sick st store merch store, <laughs> and I've gotten like shirts and masks and socks. Like I love that place. They rule. They're delicious. It Although might not never... be the best, but it's ours. Yeah, that's... So we're, we're weirdly loyal to it. Yeah. That's on the, that's on the license plate in Texas. Yeah, yeah. It's not the best, than... but it's ours. It's ours. Better than fucking In and Out. They used to have this thing called A1's Thick and Hearty Burger, and my dad and I used to go. There's like a tradition because it's like one of those seasonal burgers that they have for like you know about like eight months or something. Right. They would disappear. Yeah. Right. And then uh, they, ha I think the the 
you know, deal with A1 steak sauce or whatever went out. So they haven't had it since. <laughs> and they have this like fucking fake burger. It's the, the th- thick and spicy burger or spicy sweet burger. It's still really good, but it's not It's not an A1. It's not the burger. same. Yeah. No. I tweet at them every now and then. I'm like, bring up the fucking A1 <laughs> thick and hearty burger, you fucks. <laughs> So the, no, I see people frozen, talking about it. Is it coming was back? The frozen Coke, was that anything more than a frozen Coke? Or is it like a special blend of Coke and ice to make it a frozen? Well, what what is it? It's like a Coke slushy, but um. But why, why couldn't you just make that yourself? I you could have just thrown a can like, of... If you froze a Coke, it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. If you, fro- if you froze just a Coke, thrown it's a not going to be a frozen Coke. Snow. Yeah, it, 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 it is a Coke that is frozen. It is not a frozen Coke. Registered trademark <laughs> of the Coca-Cola Corporation. Why don't they call it that? <laughs> it's a Coke that has been frozen. Eric Bedour just wrote, what the fuck? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, Eric? What do you mean? Well, I don't I don't understand. It's have you all- a frozen Coke. It's a Coke that's frozen. What happened? It's a frozen Coke. It is not a Coke that's frozen. A Coke that's frozen is a can that you leave in the freezer and you forget about I, and it explodes. I yeah. left I left Mega 64 after Rocco started saying, I don't like it, but I like watching it. And this is the same conversation and I can't do it anymore. I can't. This is too much. <laughs> this is insane. It's so like the semantics of it is crazy. This yeah, is insane. If it's you important. freeze a Coke. I think so the many- matter is intent here. It's either, right. it's either an accident or it's a yeah, it's a it's a recipe. Someone made a good point. Why didn't you go to why didn't you go to like 7-Eleven? They have Slurpees. They, they're it's like, not a Slurpee. You shut up. <laughs> it's the same no. I no, it, it is, is the it same is, thing. It, it is not. It is it, absolutely it's not. It's frozen. Coke. But is it a slushy? A, a Slurpee is like heavier ice and rougher. A frozen Coke is much smoother. The ice but is But is it a Yes. Uh. It's like when you go to different snow cone places and they have different ice shaving machines and some are like lighter and some are just, heavier and chunkier. It's the same concept. They hit puree versus, yeah. Right. I can't Why imagine frozen coke? coke needing a recipe. This is making <laughs> that like freeze the Coke. I'm like <laughs> mad. I'm like mad about this. Listen, why, is, mad, like, why down, is this upsetting? Just, who just go down to Mickey most? D's, order a frozen Coke, take a nice long cool sip. You'll be all good. You'll be all right. I think I'm... I think or I'm slurpee. mad at Gus. I okay. think I'm mad at Gus. Or I'm saying it's not a Slurpee. When we go back to the office, I'm going to get you, Gus, a frozen Coke, and I'm going to get you a Coke that's frozen. <gasps> and I'm going to see Blind if you taste oh, the difference. Oh, and, and a Slurpee. Get, a Coke, get him a Coke Slurpee. Yeah, absolutely. We're, do- we're definitely going to do it. So wait, what I think is it's... the Slurpee? What's, the, what's that one? That's the a rough Slurpee one. Slurpee 7-Eleven, and then yeah, an Icy, rough. they've like... I thought know. an Icy was 7-Eleven. No, Slurpee yeah, is 7-Eleven. Icy okay. is the polar bear this one. This is the most Trust American me. conversation that has ever happened, I think. Well, there was like, back in Allen, there was two places, and one had Slurpees and one had Icy's, and I would ride my bicycle to both, and I, I think it equaled each other out because it's so much fucking sugar, but they were so far from my house. Uh, that was like the highlight of my day. Like every summer, just like. Oh. What about slush puppy? Oh, uh, I guess I did that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I did that too to get a blizzard from Dairy Queen. I would like <laughs> walk a crazy amount of miles to get a Butterfinger Blizzard, and it was fucking <laughs> worth it. Because I was like ten years old, and I was like doing something on my own for the first time. Yeah. I imagine you on the long walk there, like you can almost taste it. You're like, yes, Soon it's oh, gonna be in my mouth time. <laughs> the whole time. Yes, it, I think it was a similar experience to Gus going to four McDonald's oh, for yeah. frozen Coke. Yeah, Gus, how how do you feel that um, Eric is so annoyed at you right now? That's fine. I don't. What do I care? That sounds like I, Eric's I, problem, not my problem. No, I just think that I think that you're fine with your frozen Coke thing, and I I support you going to seven different McDonald's to different <laughs> counties to go get it or whatever. Two that's counties. fine. But when you start going like. No, it's a frozen Coke, not a Coke that's frozen. Yeah. I can't, I can no longer it's back It's absolutely you. true, 100%. It's so pedantic, it's insane. It's like the semantics of the whole situation is like, it's a Coke, crazy. A Coke that's frozen is a mistake. A frozen Coke is a delicious treat. <laughs> What it's like an ice cream. It's like an ice cream versus an ice cream that got freezer burned. <laughs> Wait, or like ice cream, or uh, an ice cream to iced for- cream. So a frozen <laughs> Coke, I think it would taste better. Wait, no, a Coke that is frozen, I think would taste better than a frozen Coke. My logic is the frozen Coke from McDonald's is ice that they then put 
like frozen like they put coke on top of and it it yeah, like goes coke, to the bottom the flavor goes to the bottom but, but it somehow has but it somehow has beef tallow in it or something that makes <laughs> it like extra delicious but all of their normal cokes have ice in anyway listen you guys try one you'll understand that's it uh, that's I all i'm saying I I don't like once, <laughs> dude. Once we're back, Slurpees, Ices, and fucking frozen cokes, dude. Hell, a taste test. We're gonna do it. It was worth it. Absolutely. I, worth I it. was in the, a the, meeting the, this the, morning. The, the, sorry, real fast. Last thing I'm gonna say about it. I yeah, promise, yeah, sure, sorry. sure. Um, as we were doing this, like I said, I was I was with Esther. We were driving around to all these different places. Like after the third McDonald's, you know, we we pulled off into the parking lot, and uh, as soon we had the discussion, we we're like, should we go she to Round a Rock? Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> no, she turned to me and said, "What else are we gonna do?" If we just go home, like we can't go anywhere. This is it. We may as well drive to Round Rock and get the frozen coke. I was like, you know what? You're right. That's what? awesome. Right? That's there, a there keeper. Nothing else to do, right? It's like, yeah. What do we do? Go I guess you did keep her, but yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do go home and watch TV. It's like, no. This is this is our entertainment now. Trying to find a frozen coke. <laughs> right. You guys are soulmates. Like, of any per any couple I know, like Gus and Esther, like fucking meant to be, dude. Yeah. You, do you remember um, at RTX when we had that? Those oh. people giving out the frozen bottles, like the ice bottles yeah. that had Coke in them. What would Those that? Those were amazing. Be? That's a cold Coke. It's an ice Coke. <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't remember yeah. they were they gave you a bottle, but the bottle was uh, molded from ice. ice, and then you it would make it cold and then melt, and you. Just oh it. yeah, 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 that was I cool. Think, I think Dan put Literally. one down his pants. Yeah, I think I was there. Yeah, yeah. that was weird. <laughs> no, no, no. He made you. He made you guys his uh, PA do it. I think could have been yeah know. could have been yeah. uh charles doing it what year yeah, was that was that 2017 see if i can find it this episode of the receive podcast is brought to you by me undies uh we stopped messing around about funny things and talked about something really serious and important it's your underwear that's right we're doing it me undies believes undies are something that should be yelled about from the rooftops or shown off in mere selfies for instagram they're not undie shy so let's talk i love me undies with all their colorful designs super soft material you can get them in a huge array of colors and designs to match your personality i think i'm wearing some dumpling ones right now i mean they have everything you name it uh, Mindy's isn't just here to make sure every booty is comfortable, but they're also limiting the amount of laundry you have. How thoughtful. They designed a membership that not only saves you 30% on each order, but delivers a fun new pair of undies or socks right to your door each month. Plus, when you're with MeUndies, you're the boss. You control your shipments, and you also get early access to their most exclusive prints. MeUndies are offered in a range of sizes, including extra small up to 4XL. Now that everyone's work from home, they also have the softest loungewear. Fill your closet with things you actually want to put on. Mandy's has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Mandy's has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. So to get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meandies.com slash roosterteeth. That's meandies.com slash roosterteeth. There's just so many variants. That's like a that's like the, the drink equivalent of a bread bowl. Nah, this, well, you can the bread, eat the. Eat the you won't get a fucking end. heart attack from the frozen coke thing. <laughs> You're not a fan of a bread bowl. I can't eat. No, it I fucking it's love bread. them. Oh, you like do? when I? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh yeah, it is wet bread, but it's like flavored wet bread. It's not water wet bread. Water wet bread, I get your phobia for that. But with this, it's like it's like clam chowder wet bread. You know, unless you unless you're like nah, it, it, you just can't eat it fast enough. It gets to the point where the structural integrity is just slopping apart Ugh. no you got like the hard exterior browned wall it's like good to go <laughs> i was in a meeting this morning and i'm curious to feel out what the room has to say uh we were talking about like national cereal days coming out and we're like gosh we're we making social posts and then someone was like hey do you guys ever make your cereal with warm milk and uh we got a new fellow from social and i think he's from the caribbean and he says that uh he does like they, they do like warm milk down there hmm. and he was like that's like their thing and i've never known warm milk but he like microwaves his milk yeah and i was I, on a, a train in india and they were handing out like cornflakes and milk and my milk was hot and it was i was surprised that it was hot it was fine though i got it it's good yeah okay it's all right i've, yeah. ne I've, ne I've never had cereal with warm milk i would never think to do that but um, why not I never, had, I never had cereal with any liquids in it because I was allergic to milk. So I've just always oh, had it dry my whole Team, life. Yeah. Do you no allergic milk. to like all the nut milks and all that stuff or just cow milk? 
I think it was just cow milk, but back in the eighties, that's all that was available. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just always ate it dry and still to this day. Yeah. I remember yeah, every, like every milk. Speaking of like back in the eighties, I remember being uh a young kid. I grew up, you know, in a really small town in South Texas. And the first time I ever saw tofu was at a grocery store. It was at the H E B in the small town I lived in. And it was in like the refrigerated case, like by where all the, the vegetables were. And I remember, you know, we're in Texas, obviously. It had, it was called Texas Tofu. And it had like a cartoon drawing of a cowboy on it. And the cowboy had a speech <laughs> bubble over his head that said like, what in tar nation is tofu? I was like, yeah, that's, that tracks. that's about, that's about right for like 80s small town Texas. I was like, good, on, good for them for trying. But I mean, you're decades ahead of where you should be. He's shooting at it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. There was like a gas station on our, like, it was like between Austin and Galveston. I think Eric was there and I took a picture of it because it was sporting the fact that they didn't have the uh, gas was, wasn't lined with like whatever that is it ethanol. Ethanol. Yeah. 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 They're like, we don't do ethanol in our gas. I was like, all right, cool. But they were like real proud of it. They had a big fucking sign. That was like their, that was their marketing thing. Fuck nature. Right. That was their thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't use any ethanol in my vehicle either. Um, so we mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I'm, I'm going to bring it up again. Uh, Brian, you did a great write-up. What is it? Substack? What is that that website where people uh, like? <coughs> yeah, it's on Substack. <laughs> you did a great write-up about uh, a local movie theater that used to exist off a of Riverside that you worked in uh, back in the late '90s. And in that podcast, after you had written that, I talked about like my experiences having gone there when I first moved to Austin back in the late 90s. And it's weird to hear someone else talk about that theater because I think everyone's forgotten about it. I think what did you, it's like a, a Chinese yeah, buffet now or something down there. It was, uh, yeah, it was the Riverside 8 movie theater. Um, it was at the intersection of, I think, Riverside and Willow Creek. Uh, there was like a dance club, caddy corn, like club carnival. And, you know, just a bunch of, uh, there was a whole shopping center though. It had like a blockbuster video yeah. and all that. But yeah, I, uh, I wrote about it on my sub stack, uh, which is Brian guard If you want to, if you want to read, yeah, shout out. But yeah, I, I worked there from like 97 to 98. So the first movie that was playing when I started was men in black. Cause it was like July 4th, 97, like the first one. And it was like all these crazy 90 movies. So like Titanic was there, um, just all these movies. And it, it was, it, it wasn't a great experience, but it was, it was just like, I just can't stop thinking about it. I don't know. And like, I eventually made projectionists. And so this was back when movies were still on film. So you would have to like, the, the movies would come from the studios in these big reels and we would have to build them up because uh, they would come in multiple reels and like put them all together. And then Thursday nights, because the, the movies debuted Friday. So Thursday, we would all put them together and watch them, you know, at, at, like after the theater closed. But it was also a shitty minimum wage job. Like they worked us like crazy. But it was it was just this weird combination of like kind of a cool job because I worked in a movie theater, but also it was like a crappy, crappy job. So yeah, it was, it, but it, I love that theater and it, it, was it did not have a stadium theater. seat them. Yeah. <laughs> no, it had, it had ramps. So it was one of those, I, I don't know if you remember, but like if a tall person sat in front of you, like the movie was kind of ruined for you. Uh, Cause it didn't have stadium seating. There was no frills or anything like that. And the managers hated us and treated us like shit. And if you didn't upsell <laughs> a Coke to a large, you would get fired on the spot. Like it was, it was the craziest job I've ever had. So yeah, oh, I just shit. wrote a whole, I wrote a whole essay about it yeah it i was, feel like uh, projectionists would be interesting though yeah it was fun except you couldn't be like full-time projectionist you still had to go and sweep out theaters like when, uh, when people they don't, left, they don't want so. you getting uppity no it was it was more <laughs> like yeah you're a projectionist but that's just an extra job you have in addition to being an usher hmm. so yeah like jackie brown was there and like i remember fucking up the sound to jackie brown like and i just pushed a button on the soundtrack and i just noticed like all of a sudden people turned back to the projectionist oh. looking, and people were like <laughs> shaking their fists and yelling and then i saw what i had done and i turned it back on 
And and another time there was like a smudge on the projection glass and you could see it on the screen. It was this big black smudge. And I just grabbed a rag and you could see this giant hand come and wipe it off. <laughs> and I and, and and people just start applauding. I could just see them down there clapping after I did it. That was I the highlight God. of the whole job. That, that, yeah. That, that was a rambunctious movie theater. There was always wild yeah, shit going oh, on. Yeah. I saw so many movies there and it was yes. always like you would half the experience was watching the movie and half the experience was experiencing it with the people who yes, were there in the yes. theater. Yeah, lots of lots of yelling at the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, lots of uh, uh drug paraphernalia <laughs> found uh in the aftermath. And I didn't know you could do this, but people would leave in the middle of a movie saying they just didn't like it and they would just go yeah i just I, that was it was really slow it sucked and we would just give them free passes you the rule is you never gave them their money back but you would give them a free pass to the next so they'll come back but i know you could just leave the session stand yeah, yeah exactly because we didn't make any money off the movie off the ticket sales it was all uh, off the popcorn but yeah i didn't know you could just leave because a movie sucked and like demand <laughs> something have you it's walked a pretty out of, thing have you walked out of movies not to get a refund, but just in general. I don't know if I ever have. I've only fallen asleep. I did one time. Um, fuck, what was it? It was a bad Sylvester Stallone movie. I know Over the top? To no such thing. No, it was fuck. It was him and Antonio Banderas. Um, Spy Kids? Was... No, no. It was like 90s. Or Shark, shark Boy Love Man? Girl. Assassin? Yes, it was the first one I ever... I was like, <laughs> yeah... I just don't want to finish this. I have that <laughs> movie. I've never seen it. I, I, went, yeah. I went on a little Stallone spree. I just watched Over the Top. It's. <laughs> I only yeah. said that because I think Brian just tweeted about Over the Top right before we I started like this podcast. I like him. Uh, yeah, I like Sylvester Stallone, but it was just even even for me, it was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this. I don't know how they do it, but pretty much like every other scene in Over the Top, especially all the arm wrestling stuff, all the lens flares are like big stars. I don't know what they did to do that, but it's it's definitely a choice. Like just tons of stars all over yeah. the screen. I mean, that must have been the camera they were recording on, right? Yeah, like or was the it the lens? Lens. Or yeah. Uh, oh Christ. Shane says I cross out, filter. I walked out of um. Oh, cross filter. I walked out of Meet the Spartans. Oh, oh fuck! Why would you go there to begin with, bro? Uh, that that yeah. was like on the ass end of the scary movie, like yeah, yeah. parody movie trope thing. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I. I mean, it was just stuff to do back then when you, when you had more free time as a yeah. teenager. I see yeah, as a teenager sure. at the time. But uh, stakes were pretty low back then. You can do whatever. Yeah, I just thought, I, nah. I uh, there was. Uh, I I see someone in chat. Uh, Soundman says he walked out of Kill Bill, or he, they walked out of Kill Bill, and that reminds me. Um, when the first Kill Bill came out, I was living in Puerto Rico. And uh, I went to the movie theater to watch it. I bought a ticket to go. I, there's a few theater, there's a few movies I saw while I lived down there, and that Kill Bill was one of them. But I made a mistake when I went to go see Kill Bill in Puerto Rico, and I bought a ticket that was to a screening that was dubbed in Spanish. Oh. Uh, and I wasn't expecting it, so I get in and I sit down, and the movie starts like. This is going to be more difficult than I was expecting. It's like, I'm going to have to really <laughs> be thinking while I'm watching. Concentrate. <laughs> Just like focus on the, on the bright side, I learned the word for uh, for sword or steel that they kept saying in that movie over and over. Hattori yeah, was... Enzo Steel. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I, I learned something from watching Kill Bill the first time. If I hadn't been with friends, I would have walked out of the Dumb and Dumber sequel. Not Dumb and Dumber-er, but the, the one with like Jim Carrey and... Uh... Dumb and Dumber 2? Yeah, that shit fucking sucked. So, uh, w the Alamo Draft House that's over, it's like, it's on the north side. Uh, oh, God. It's the old village. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. On yeah. like Anderson. On Anderson, yeah. yeah. That's the one. The, the village draft house is fucking cursed. I've only seen dog shit movies there. It's cursed. Huh. South Lamar and Mueller, we're good to go. I love if the I go village. To see a, and no, if we go to Village, it's fucking. It's a terrible shit movie. Ah, I've seen. I've seen Fifty Shades of Grey there. I saw <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, I saw <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. I saw some like shit indie movie. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. I'm just kind of blanking on them. But I, I hate that place. I feel like the uh, on a plane equivalent of walking out is just letting yourself fall asleep. Like there's been times yeah, on planes yeah, where I'm like I'm yeah. feeling tired. It's like. I want to make the most of this. I want to sleep away as much of this fight as possible. But sometimes if you're right at the end of a movie or you're like, you're still into it, you, you, you kind of stay awake. There, 
I watched Bumblebee, and I was probably oh. ten minutes from. Is that like Transformers movie? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was probably like ten minutes from the end, and I was feeling tired. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna fall asleep. I've seen everything but the last ten minutes of that movie. It, uh, am I, I crazy? Yeah, I, the, the I love first, that movie. The first time I ever went to Australia, it was like back before it was on-demand entertainment on the seat back. So it's like they would play movies just on a loop. So it's like you had maybe two or three movies you could choose from, but that was it. And then after they would play through, there'd be like another movie they would play through on a loop. It sucked. So I remember the first time I went down there, uh, that like I was not happy with any of the movie selections. So I started watching <laughs> uh, a Jack Black, Ben Stiller movie called Envy that came out like in 2003 or 2002 oh, God. maybe. And the movie was so bad I turned it off and I didn't fall asleep. I sat there in the dark in my seat, like <laughs> it, over the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I was like, it is preferable to sit here in the dark than to keep watching that movie. And I, yeah. I sat, I sat in the dark for like an hour and a half till the next, like till the new movie started up and I could try to watch a different movie. It that was movie like, it was sucked so ass. bad. Yeah. It was like poo, poo be gone Vapor or whatever. You va yeah. Fuck that movie, dude. <laughs> I did that. I did so that too. <laughs> the 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 absolute worst movie I've ever been to. It was a double feature of uh, In Time. I think it was like a Justin Timberlake movie that was like it was a, it was actually a really good sci-fi movie that kind of just flew under the radar. And uh, it was a drive-in movie theater, and uh, we went and they had a double feature for that and uh, Jack and Jill, that Adam Sandler movie oh, where he plays yeah. his own brother and sister. Uh, I we, I was with my girlfriend at the time. We just fucked during that movie because it was so it was so bad. We didn't we didn't care. It sucked. <laughs> Had a big budget that Jack and Jill movie. Did it? Oh, they always do. Yeah, the Sandler movies always do. Happy Madison. He just gets to fly his friends out to like, you know, Hawaii, whatever. That happened what? to me with Spy. We we went to go see Spy Games with uh, Brad Pitt and Robert Redford. Only we had all been like drinking the whole day. And then at like midnight, a friend of mine was like, why don't we go? It was a, a group of us. Why don't we go watch a movie? That was the only thing that was playing. I slept through the entire thing. Nice. And then someone just woke me up at the end and they were all laughing. And I was like, why are you laughing? They were like, you snored through the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our old uh, like PA that worked in live action, he's like AC and stuff like that as well. Uh, Colton fell asleep during Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and I almost punched him awake. I was so frustrated. <laughs> that would be yeah. so fucking yeah. good. <laughs> he's he's awesome. snoring. Uh, uh, I wonder way, what movie Jack, would be Jack and Jill had a seventy nine million dollar budget. Just throwing that out. Yeah, there. that's a Holy lot. Holy crap! Cool that is. Jesus Christ! I've never I've never seen it, but this. <laughs> It that sucks ass. There's Al Pacino and he sings at a Dunkin' Donuts Dunk and he's Dunkachino. Oh, it's we've like, all seen that video. Fuck, dude. It like I'm getting hot and sweaty thinking about it. Yeah, that movie made so many people mad. Just the movie existing seemed to irritate a lot of people. It's like that and like the like don't mess with Zohan and like uh <laughs> Oh, Deuce Bigelow. It's just like this. These just shit. Rob Schneider, Adam Sandler, like Happy Madison. Uh, it's a movies. shame though, because I I think Adam Sandler is really funny. Like Happy Gilmore. I, I I I guess I saw it at the right age, but I remember just loving that movie. Oh, dude, no, I'm not saying anything about Adam Sandler. Like '90s Adam Sandler, like like Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. I was raised on that. Waterboy. I was raised on that shit. It's just like he just started phoning it in, and uh, it, <laughs> God. I was, because uh, I, I hadn't seen any of the Rocky movies until a couple of months ago. We just went on a big Rocky spree. And I was trying to figure out where I knew Apollo Creed from. I was like, what is he in? I was like, <laughs> oh, he's, he's Chubbs in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> he has the w wooden hand. Yeah. So um, funny. He's in Predator. Yep. Yeah. He's the yeah. best movie All ever. jacked up. Yeah. That yeah. guy's ripped. Yeah. I mean, to this day, he's still jacked. Like in, in Mandalorian, he's like it's just a big fucking. He did dude. look good. Yeah, Carl Weathers did look good in that. Yeah, he's, he's in. Uh, he, he's in Arrested Development. He's one of my favorite recurring characters. Also, for what it's worth, because like personally, when I hear about a celebrity being a dickhead in, in real life, I'm like, eh, I don't like them as much. Carl Weathers is apparently just a gym of a person. I had a friend oh, who like good. worked at some like restaurant, some something or another, and Carl Weathers came in, just fucking chatted her up. Just like sweet as can be. Just sounds like a just a hell of a guy. I would love to meet him and then do the son of a bitch Dylan <laughs> handshake. 
dreams, dreams. goals. Yep. Uh, oh, um, I, a couple podcasts ago, I had mentioned that I was watching that uh, HBO series, The Lady and the Dale, which is a really interesting series. I think everyone should go watch it. But that, at the time I talked about it last, I hadn't seen the last episode because it wasn't out yet. The last episode's come out since then. That story, like, ends in Austin. Like, the last episode is all about Austin. It's it's really strange, the turn that it takes. And, uh, Brian, you lived here in the late 90s, right? Um, yeah. You remember how there were always those guys at intersections who were selling roses, um, like oh, rose the for rose, a dollar. Yeah, yeah. And downtown, and downtown too. Yeah. If you went out, they would yeah come up to you. Apparently, like that's how the Lady in the Dale documentary ends. Like she was the person who orchestrated all of that, and I guess uh, she had a place like out near Bastrop, and she would just take in like homeless people who uh, had nothing else, and she would like give them a home and. Uh, as if they wanted to work, they could go out and sell roses. Uh, Holy shit! That's how that happened. Yeah, it's like oh, wow. She would, you know, go out. I guess like she would. Recru- I mean, recruits a weird word, but she'd like find homeless people in Houston right. or San Antonio or whoever, and be like, right. "You want to come to Austin? You want a job? <laughs> you want you want somewhere to live?" Uh, and uh, that's like that's yeah, how they all would happened. have the little buckets with the roses in. It. No, I totally. Remember. I wish I had bought one. Now yeah. I literally never did. Yeah, it, it, it was because they were everywhere in the late 90s yes. and early 2000s yes. in austin absolutely when yeah. i was i mean when i was in college that was still going on i feel like there was like ladies that were like selling buckets of roses or they had roses and stuff like that hmm. that was like 2000 late teens 2000s i don't know mm. no, mid- well, I, I think this particular run ended like a one like i think it i think it did come back like you're saying but it's like all oh, oh like when it was originally happened was like right 96 to 2001 or something like that huh I was like seeing Austin in uh, like film and video games and just seeing how they interpret it. Like it was in Last of Us and it was just like, not really. You just kind of there, but it wasn't like a parody. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was this Michael Fassbender movie called Frank that ended up, I was like super hyped for it and ended up not being very good. But they kind of played it up as like, ah, Root and Tootin. Austin, Texas. And I was just like, I remember first hearing of Austin in Road Trip. Oh yeah. The, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The confusion yeah, yeah, yeah. between Austin and Boston with uh, Tom Green. <laughs> it's funny. That was the only reason I knew of it. Never saw that movie. Yeah, they attended the University of Austin, right, or something like that. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was okay. Or at least yeah. I remember at the time it was okay. That that's a movie you might have screened at the <laughs> at the on Riverside. <laughs> it was right around that. God, time. so many of those are burned into my brain, like Face Off. Uh, is one of those oh, good goodwill so good. hunting. Like I've seen those movies so many I, times. I saw Face Off in the Blues theater. Brothers 2000. Not as good. Yeah, <laughs> I saw Face Off at a theater in Del Rio, Texas, which is a small uh, town out in the U.S. Mexico border. Yeah, and I like I didn't live in Del Rio. I drove out there with my friends because Del Rio had a better theater than the city I lived in, and it was like a really empty screen because we went like in the middle of the day, and there was a guy seated like two rows in front of me. The theater was entirely empty. It was like me, my two friends, and like this guy who was seated like two rows in front of me. And near the end of Face Off, I forget the exact circumstance, but there's a scene where it's like, there's a speedboat that like goes airborne and flies over another boat Mm -hmm. and there's like a big explosion behind it. And the guy who was like two seats in front of me, just like he literally stood up, put his arms in the air and went, yeah! Like he was so excited. (laughs) Like he was so into the movie. (laughs) He's so happy. (laughs) Face off. Uh, Wait, so was that a totally independent movie or was it like any like Cinemark or AMC or was it just like its own fucking thing? Um, No, it was affiliated with some like Act 3 theaters or something. I mean, it was like a, oh, it they're was out of business in, probably. <laughs> yeah, they're oh, they're totally out of business. But yeah, it was it was affiliated with. I mean, we got like first run movies, yeah. but it I was like it, it wasn't when everything had quite you know, centralized yet. Didn't it eventually change? I want to say like right before it closed, maybe in the mid 2000s, it became a Cinemark maybe? Maybe, yeah. That I, think, would, I, that I, would sound I right. think it did change at one point, but it was like right at the end before they closed I feel down. like there's like a, like a Boy Scout badge for working for a company that went under, you know? Like, the, and you say it and it kind of brings back, like, like I used to work for KB Toys and they went bankrupt. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that place like had so many memories attached to it when I was a kid, but then it completely changed when I was in high school and I fucking hated the place. But, uh, f- Blockbuster was cool though. Like, I, like everyone's like joking about the last Blockbuster. I think it's in Alaska or whatever. 
I want to fucking go there so bad. Didn't, didn't they close or are they still around? Oh, COVID might have closed I think them down. Oh, maybe. I, I quit the movie theater to go work at a blockbuster, like right next door, basically. Dude. And it was like, yeah. And, and they treated us like marginally better there at the block because it was like corporate, you know, a little bit more. You wanted to I stay have... close to the movies. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I wanted to stay in the industry. It was funny because, so like you say that, but um, not to shit on UT, but to shit on UT, uh, the radio, television, film department, whenever they would release their reports of like what their, uh, you know, students that went on and what they were doing after their yeah. degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would say, uh, yeah, we got 50, you know, 70% of our students when our alumni went on to work in the film industry. But what they don't know is like, they also count like blockbuster, like managing a blockbuster. As, oh, like, you gotta be the kidding. Industry. Yeah. So it was like, a, it's like a cheat. There's, There's a distribution arm of the film industry. <laughs> There's only one, one of the guys <laughs> one left in Bend, Oregon. Holy shit. One of the guys I worked with at Blockbuster at, at that, and it was the same shopping complex. It was the same like strip mall thing. Uh, he went on to be a director, Brian Bertino. He made a, like a horror movie called The Strangers. Uh, but we we like worked together at uh, at Blockbuster Video back in the, in like 1998. Yeah, this is like, super random. It's like right by yeah. that McDonald's on Riverside, right? Like the McDonald's yes, is, yeah, it was, is in that. It was right across. It was right lot. across Riverside. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have yep. a random thing. It's super relevant, though. They had these things where you go to the Blockbuster and you could film a VHS like yes! diary. Yep. Yep. Hell and yeah. then I have me and my sisters in this box. I bought right. a bunch of VHSs back from my uh, parents' house because I'm going to digitize them all. Um, but yeah. So I what is that. that on there? So. You used to go to the Blockbuster and they would have a VHS camera and then they'd you'd sit on this like dot that was like on the floor and then the guy would ask you a series of questions. It was almost like a cast and couch thing. Uh, and you're just like, hey, I'm Blaine. I want to be a astronaut, you know, that shit. So uh, it was like, but if you ever got lost or something, there would be a recording of you, I think. Or if you got like kidnapped <laughs> or something. Kidnapping kids was very big in the 80s and yeah. 90s. Okay, yeah. you say that, but I'm looking wow, at the fashion. back of it and it's like home address, home phone, mother's name. Yeah, no, mother's that's work, what it was Father's for, name, yeah. father's work. They just documenting date. children. Age, years, months. Yeah. <laughs> Last counter number. Jesus Christ, yeah. Blood type. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, your kid print <laughs> your kid print video provides an invaluable means of current yeah. identification for your child yeah. in the event of an emergency situation. That's I what thought my parents for. were doing this as a fucking like nice little goof. <laughs> no, no, I worked at the blockbuster. Oh shit. <laughs> like, I know what that shit was for. It was for if you got kidnapped or something, they could give that to the media and the <laughs> oh, oh, here, here's him it being awkward National at a blockbuster. Center for video. missing and exploited children. It says yeah. it at the bottom. Oh, That's so this, dark. This ruins this whole experience <laughs> for me. I thought my parents were making a fucking time capsule. That's amazing. It's like the things you look back, like as a kid, you think it's like goofy and fun, but it's like really the the adults yeah. are like, if Blaine ever gets kidnapped and murdered, we want to have something we can Bro. turn over to the media. Brian, it was all you... the Oklahoma City bombing, man. That's what started it. Yeah. When Prime was explaining, I was like, oh, that, I guess that would be a cool like alternate use for like that cute thing, but I didn't realize. It's like written on the oh, that's... <laughs> I, I guess it was some lame like public service thing they were doing to like, oh, we're going to be good corporate citizen here. If your kid's murdered, here's what you can, <laughs> you know, put out on the local news. Shit. I got to digitize that because I want to know what the you questions gotta were. You got to play yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, that's amazing. All right. Well, uh, it's about uh, that's that's a good note to wrap up on. I want to end on a high note. Thanks for uh, for sharing that with us, Blaine. <laughs> I look forward to <laughs> yeah. watching your uh, your video when you digitize it and share it with us. Uh, but all right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back again next week. Uh, we'll see you guys then.